Hi, welcome to What's the Word. I'm your host, Jamie McFadden, and I'm so excited to have you here. This podcast is about all things wellness. Each week, we will focus on a word of the day, and I interview some of the most inspirational people I know and share that inspiration with you. Join me. Let's learn together on What's the Word. This is the place where I Hi, and welcome to What's the Word. I'm your host, Jamie McFadden, and this podcast is about all things wellness. Each week, we focus on a word of the day, and today's word is creator. And I'm so excited and honored to have with me here David Restiano, creator, founder, and CEO of Sore Soap, which has become my favorite soap. So, hello and welcome. I want to hear from you right away. You chose the word of the day, you chose creator. Can you expand on that a little bit? And I bet you might even have a definition in your mind. Sure. I, I, <laughs> I love that. I love that word creator. Hi, Jamie. Hi, everybody. It's, it's really Hi. nice to be with you today. Um, so creator resonates with me. Uh, I've been an artist my whole life. I've always made things from nothing and it's given me so much satisfaction. And it really is what drives me in life is just to create things. And, and uh, I'm trying to translate that into business now. So I'm, I'm being, I'm trying to be creator in all walks of life. I love that. It's such a great word. And so now just to kind of dive right into things. So for those that are listening or watching, you know, I always have my audience or my guests choose a word and then we go into that word. So David, can you share with us? And we talked about this on clubhouse recently, which by the way, um, I feel so blessed to have met you on clubhouse and to be part of your clubhouse family. And with that being said, when you think about the word creator and what you just spoke about, for someone that's listening right now, do you have any tips you can offer to them on how to tap into their creativity? Because I think sometimes we can get stuck. Sure. I uh, think about this a lot. Uh, this morning, in fact, I, I felt like I had content block. I just couldn't think of the way I wanted to express the feelings I had this morning and, and make it work on social media. Um I'm very grateful for meeting you too. You're in my starting five and my starting 11, yes. like we joke about <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's great how, how Clubhouse has worked. It's just really been such a natural extension of who we are and what we want to do and how we want to be. And it's just really been great. Um, but to get back to your question, I guess if you get stuck, I think I always revert back to my, what are my inspirations? What are my passions? What's my muse? You know, to I guess, go back to some ancient Greek uh, inspiration, right? What Everybody needs a muse, right? Um, I guess What's my, your muse? <laughs> my muse has always been my family, you know, whether it was my mother when I was younger or uh, now my wife and my children, they're my muse. You know, I want to be, I want to be successful in many different ways for them. And they inspire me to do that every day, just like I'm sure you're inspired by the same types of things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so with you, and I know a little bit about you because I've gotten to know you a little bit, but you play sports. So you're an athlete. Um, you've created now Sore Soap, which we're going to talk about. And I see one right there on your desk. So I can't wait to be sharing that. Yes. And then you also do a lot of artwork and other creative outlets. So, you know, where uh, have you always been kind of in that creator zone? Have you always been someone that's just like, oh, or did was it like a moment? Did you have a catalyst moment where you're like, I want to really create things in the world and do all of these things? How did that come about? I've always been, I've always been an artist. I've always been a creator in that aspect. Um, ever since I can remember, you know, you know how you have your earliest memories as a child. I can remember making books and drawings and spending hours and hours and hours <laughs> up until, I mean, just the, constantly when I wasn't playing sports, I was always just drawing. And it was such a great way to relax and express myself and get in touch with the way I was feeling. And then I guess as I grew into an adult, I, I went to school with the intention of being a doctor. Um, so long story short, I went from a biology major, I'll spare you the gory details. I went from a biology <laughs> major to an art major. And uh, my father was quite surprised by that decision. Uh, and I don't think he really understood why I needed to do that. But I did. I, I just didn't feel like I was living. I mean, I didn't think about it in these terms at 20 or 18 or 19, right. but I wasn't living an authentic life. I wouldn't have been li living an authentic life at that point if had I not 
gone back to what I was really passionate about. And, and to be honest with you, it's easy to say in hindsight, 25 years later, I don't feel like I work a day in my life. My, my, my mother used to always say to me, you know, find a job that you love and it won't feel like work. So I know you have a lot of enjoyment with your work and all the things you're pursuing. And I feel the same way. So I'm so grateful that I followed my heart and I followed my intuition. And I don't think I could have been a doctor. Anyway, I can't even watch my daughter <laughs> or my son get a needle without, you know, right. leaving the room. My wife makes, you know, she gets a good laugh about that all the time. So follow your heart. And I think that helps be a creator, be creative all the time. Definitely. I love that. And, and just tapping into that a little bit deeper because, you know, my listeners can be from all over the globe experiencing all different things and they come to what's the word because they're curious, you know, to hear someone's not just their story, but then kind of some, some tips and tricks that they've used based on that word, um, to really inspire, you know, whoever's listening. So right now you just tapped into something where you said, listen to your heart. And I think that so many of us can get wrapped in this busy, you know, mindset of if, you know, more is better, work harder, be stronger. Um, and you also are someone that you, you were an athlete, you are an athlete. So, um, you know, how, how do you put those two together when we're constantly being fed on the outside, do, 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 do. Um, but then there's so much of the being within, like, do you have any things that have resonated for you in your life where you're like, Oh yeah. Like what helps you really listen to your heart? I think, really and it's so easy to say it's not easy to do but really just trying to live in the moment you know uh stay in the moment enjoy what you're doing whether it's soccer i play soccer constantly at night you know i'll go and play soccer in fact the other night when i came home that's when we started talking about this it was like midnight and you're like why are you still awake it's, it's like what are you, you know, doing awake? 12 30 yeah so anyway it's such a great feeling to be able to do what you feel you should be doing you know and be in the right place and feel like you're serving a greater good, whether it's health and fitness or business or art, all those things can make you feel like you're creating the right atmosphere or creating the right picture. And I, I mean, I hate to make an extended analogy, but I could make an analogy about art in everything, right? I mean, I'm painting mm -hmm. my own life picture. I'm creating the canvas that I want to see in front of me. I'm using the colors that have been given to me, the palette, you know, all those, you know, cliche hokey kind of ideas, but it's true. I mean, we, we're given a certain set of things in our life and we can either use them, embrace them and share them with others, or mm -hmm. we can't, I mean, or we don't, or we choose not to, or maybe we haven't figured out how to yet. Um, I think the older I get and the more life I live and the more perspective I'm able to lend my life every day, I think it's easier for me to realize when I need to input something and when I need to sit back. And, and it's a perfect analogy, like on Clubhouse, for those of you have that, that have been on it, you know, when, when you have something to add, you should add it. You raise your hand, mm -hmm. you go add to the conversation, you add to the room, you add to the relationships. And if you don't have anything to add, it's probably good advice just to sit and listen, be an active listener. You know, I mean, I yeah. jump into many, many situations in my life where I'm not really sure what I'm doing there or, or what I can add or how I'm going right. to manage, but just wait and stay within yourself, feel confident in your abilities. And then it kind of presents itself in the right time. So I love that. And and to go back to to the word of the day, creator, right? Where, you know, we could think about this and get really deep and philosoph philosophical in so many ways. And I, I really want for whoever's listening right now to tap into their own creativity. And like you said, listening to your heart and doing something that, um, you know, makes you feel good and finding that purpose and, and feeling like you're, you know, doing what feels best. I think that that can be really challenging for a lot of people, um, you know, because we are preconditioned from a very young age. I mean, I already see it with my daughter who's four, where already people are checking, you know, boxes. Can she do this already? Is she doing this? Is she, oh, wow, she's only doing, oh, she's not doing this. Um, so there's already that kind of pressure that we get, we get and put into this pressurized tank. And so, you know, for anyone that's listening right now, and I've, I've heard you be vulnerable in many ways. And I appreciate that and respect that so much. And I, I won't make you cry here today like I have before. <laughs> but I but I do know that there is such a big depth of connection when people can like hear you and and understand. And so, you know, for you, you said you went you were gonna go to you were going to medical school to be a doctor and then you ended up changing your major um, and going into art. So for someone that's listening right now, 
like even some of my cousins where they're they're programmed okay you need to get go and be a doctor or engineer or you know join the family real estate business or all these things that they have more of like a monetary value to them as opposed to the heart so i'm curious with you like what was your catalyst for making that decision for yourself cuz i'm certain and i come from a greek family you come from an italian family like you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure to do these things. And I know I broke off and was the black sheep. So for you, like, how did you do that? And like, what words of wisdom could you give to someone listening? That's like, okay, I really want to break this mold, or I really want to break this cycle and be creative, but I'm scared. What would you say? Or to your younger self? So I'm going to be careful because I don't want to get emotional, but it all comes back down to my mother, for sure. Like, I knew that I could express myself in any way I needed to, Right. I always had a safe place to talk or to create uh, again with that word. But Mm -hmm. and I knew that that it was bigger than that. Like I knew that no matter what decision I made, as long as I did my best, she used to always say, you know what, doesn't matter what you be in life. As long as you try your best, I don't care if you're on the back of a garbage truck. And it's really not the best. It's not the best analogy these days. We become more sensitive. But let's just say, uh, you know, um, any job, she would say, just make sure you do your best. And at the end of the day, come home. And know that you tried your best and I'll be proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. So just her saying that, right, in that throwaway comment, I knew that, you know, when some people might question that decision to stray away from biology or stray away from medicine and become what many people think is like less, you know, less mm-hmm. of a job, less of a career path. I just knew somehow that it would all work out. And, and luckily it was, I'm, I'm much older than you. So it was back when the internet was just starting. And I knew that there was going to be a place for digital designers and digital content creators and, and uh, all that stuff. So I just kind of had a feeling, and I guess it's easy to say, well, just go with your feelings, but you have to be prepared to. So switching gears a little bit, I was a good student. I was, I was very studious. I, I took a lot of care with my intelligence and my grades and you know, to earn the scholarships, but also to keep the, my grade point average up while I was playing division one soccer. Um, there was a lot of hard work involved. It wasn't just me, you know, kind of hopping along these stones thinking, I'm just going to follow my dreams and do this and do that. So there was a <laughs> lot of hard work involved, but I think that the, the flexibility I knew that I had within, you know, myself to know that I'd always have that support net and that support structure from my mother, which kind of bubbled over into mm-hmm. my father, even though it wasn't as easy for him to say, you know, Hey, go be an artist, go do this you know, just because he was such a hard worker in life and he always provided for us. Um, You know, when he was my age, when I was making decisions to become an artist, he was in the Air Force, you know, and then right Right. after the Air Force, he was having children and he he was just, he was thinking about things much differently, like how to be responsible, how to provide for a family, how to get a career. And he, he, nobody worked harder than him in my life. Um, So two sides to the coin, right? I knew that he would, he would appreciate my hard work later in life. And now he's, so proud of me, you know, where I've come and I've been able to enjoy my life and, and enjoy every step along the way. And um, so, yeah, to long winded answer. Yeah. I think I just knew that I would have the support of my parents mm-hmm. and uh, you know, even if it wasn't easy uh, at the beginning, I knew that in the long run it would work out and I just trusted in my intuition. And I think I, that's it. I love that. Yeah. I think just the word creator and creating anything, I think there, there comes a point where we really do have to just drop all fears, let go of what anyone's ever told us, let go of our own limiting belief or whatever the the story is we're telling ourselves and just kind of put the blinders on and and go for it. Because if nothing else, you will learn a lot along the way and it may lead you somewhere that you're like, oh, well, that's not really where I thought it was going, but this is kind of cool, right? Like even when I think about just in the last couple of years, uh, you know, even just recently meeting people like you in my life where it's like being in that flow of your energy, doing what you believe in, sharing you know your strengths and talents with the world, and then all of a sudden you it, the world brings interesting people to you as well. So with that being said, I definitely want to talk about. I now have uh, been using your soap every day, and I never thought I would go back to a bar soap. Um, I always am like you know I like the pump soaps or you know. Uh, but I, I absolutely love it. So I just want to dive in and, and ask you, you know, to share whatever you can about Source Soap and what it does and who it can help. And for anyone that's listening right now that's going, what are you talking about, bar of soap? Um, just just listen or watch. Okay, so share with us, please. All right. So uh, being a creator, I, I think part of being a creator is looking at problems in a new creative 
way, right? My mother always mm-hmm. taught me, you know, if you haven't, if you're having a problem with something or you're stuck on an answer, or you're stuck on a solution, look at it from a different angle. She would even go so far as to say, get on the floor, look at it upside down, yeah. you know, <laughs> lay under, lay under the table and figure out how the table works. Look at it yeah. from that, in a way that nobody else looks at it, Right. So right. Um, long story short, I came home one day. I play a lot of soccer. Like I said, I run a lot. I'm always putting a lot of wear and tear on my joints. I'm 46. Uh, I was having some hip flexor pain and some injury that I was seeing a physical therapist for. So he was using uh, what's called a Graston tool on my soft mm-hmm. tissue. And it's a metal tool that you've probably familiar with. It's um, you use it with a little emollient and you kind of, you, you rub, you, you rub the tissue and it breaks down adhesions in the fascia. We could get into a whole conversation, but basically it, it increases blood flow and breaks down what's called myofascial adhesions, which allows mm-hmm. your body to feel better, feel less soreness, increased blood flow, a bunch of, a multitude of other things that, you know, I'm learning as I go, as I wasn't a clinician, um, you know, my previous experience in medicine was when I switched my major to art. So, um, <laughs> but I had enough understanding of the body and what he was doing to me at the physical therapist visits that I came home one day and I jumped in the shower and I looked at this bar of Irish spring and it had a curve in it, just like the tool he was using. So mm-hmm. I got, I got really excited, Jamie. I jumped out of the shower ran to my office and then I started Googling, you know, myofascial soap, Graston soap, uh, massage soap, and nothing came up. It didn't exist. Right. So that was like, okay, here's my opportunity to really do something that might be really cool. Right. So I did some sketches and I worked up a trade, a logo and what I thought would be a cool trademark symbol uh, and a color scheme and all this stuff. I got really excited about it. And I've done this in the past, but then I realized, I think we really might've solved the problem here. So fast forward a year later, we're working with professional athletes all, all across the world, soccer players, basketball players, collegiate athletes. Now we're starting to see normal people, quote unquote, normal people, not, you know, not people who are me. training every day, like me and you, right? We just, we're sore. We have pain. Our backs hurt. You know, we drive, we sit at desks, you know, we don't move as much as we want to. We don't move as much as we should. You know, you and I are still lucky. We're, we're, we're able to train and, and be fit, but I'm starting to hear anecdotal evidence from all the people that we're lucky enough to have as customers now. You know, I had a ski accident eight years ago. Jeannie, you've been in rooms with Jeannie. Mm-hmm. Um, had a ski accident all the, a few years ago, and I, I went to physical therapy. I went to rehab, but I, my leg never felt the same. So now I'm using your soap in the shower, and it's feeling better. It doesn't mm-hmm. cure anything. It doesn't solve anything, but it's helping people feel better. And that was the whole mantra, the whole mission statement that I started to really write down on little post-it notes and put everywhere, help people feel better, help people do more of what they love to do. That was it, right? So we've built yeah. up a business around it. My partner is my physical therapist. Now I called him a couple couple weeks after I started doing the sketches and I said, you want to be you want to be my business partner? You want to go into business? So he's my co-founder. Um, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's really so cool. awesome. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so great. And so now, okay, can you explain a little bit? Because uh, first of all, I love the scent, right? There's like the eucalyptus and lavender and I don't even know what else is in there. But, um, but now, you know, just explain a little bit of like, how does this help someone's body. Cause I know when, when I'm, you know, getting right here or I'm getting my Achilles, I'm like, Oh, it just feels so nice. What, like, can you explain a little bit more of like the sciency behind like how this is helping and what's in it? Sure. So uh, it's made with, um, very hard. So the difference between this and bar soap, like you were saying, is this doesn't get all smushy and gloppy. I mean, it like, it stays firm. It stays durable. We figured out a formula uh, we've put all natural ingredients together, but we've done it in a way and we've manufactured it in a way that creates a very hard bar of soap. I was always thinking mm-hmm. like, you know, those real fancy French bars of soap that you get in a, in a fancy hotel. I wanted yeah. it to be like that, but I wanted it to lather very well. So right. uh, we figured out a way to do it. Um, it's got menthol, lavender and chamomile. So lavender and chamomile are very like naturally beneficial ingredients. They're anti-inflammatory naturally. They have great antimicrobial, antibacterial benefits. Um, and then the menthol, obviously like in biofreeze, we have a a nice prescriptive dose of menthol in the bar. So it gives just enough cooling effect just to feel like, so your muscle knows it's there. Right. And that Mm -hmm. the more I've learned about what the principle behind this is, it's called IASTM it's instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. And then there's another acronym called instrument assisted neurosensory modulation for those geeks. Say that 10 times. (laughs) Yeah, I can't. Um, so basically it's like when you have pain, right? Say you went and played tennis today, Jamie, and your left forearm was sore from playing right. tennis, but you had no real acute injury, but it was just sore. When you get in the shower at night, the hot water 
the steam, and then the aromatherapy from the bar itself, just kind of wafting through the air. Plus, you the, the, the actual action of you rubbing your skin is going mm -hmm. to change the way your body perceives of pain. So I'll leave it to my partner, Dr. Dan Stats, to explain it on the website or in some other literature or if you ever need him. But it's there's so many benefits to just being in contact with your skin, self-massage. Um, mm -hmm. it, inter it intercepts and interrupts the pain signals in many different ways. Um, and, and there's so many intelligent people on Clubhouse that I've been able to have these great geeky conversations with about neurosensory mod modulation mm -hmm. and upregulation and downregulation, stuff that used to be over my head, but now I'm really starting to embrace and lean into it. And it's, it's exciting because it's not only validating the crazy idea I had, but it's also propelling me forward, knowing that it's going to help many, many people. And that's all I really wanted to do. So help people feel good or better. Is that what you're just help people yeah. feel better and do more of what they love? I mean, isn't that what we all want to do, right? You, you I just want to be that. able to play with your daughter, yeah. exercise, run on the beach, go climb the mountains and, you know, vacuum your living room without hurting <laughs> your back. Right. I mean, that's all I really want to be able to do is just get I up from my it. desk without too much pain and go run and play soccer and play with my kids and, you know, do stuff. That's it. Just do stuff, do more stuff. I love it. And I, I also feel like whenever I think about you, I always think about fun. I always think about you have a great element of fun. And I think that in terms of tapping into one's own creativity, there's such an element that it's got to be fun, right? Like there's got to be some fun because, and, and even with that, then obviously you've developed something, you've created something and you've created many things, but this soap specifically, I'm fairly certain there's been times where, you know, you probably had long hours working into it and looking into different things and geeking out and, you know, really studying and researching and all of that, and then trial and error of this and that. Um, but for someone that's listening right now, you know, where does that element, like in a, in a time when we think about creator as it, it becomes a very serious thing. So how do we throw in and sprinkle the fun uh, for anyone listening that's like, well, yeah, I'm working on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but I'm so busy, I don't have time for fun. And I think, like I said, I think of you and I think of, of fun. So do you have any tips on like how a quick way that someone could just start to throw an element of fun? Yeah, I love to have fun. I try to have as much fun as I can every day. And I think I get frustrated when I can't just have fun, like right? when it has to feel like work, I get frustrated, but I know that we're working towards something, right? So like this morning, I was trying to make some content, filming videos, and I just, I was editing it and trying to put it together. That wasn't very fun because it wasn't easy. It wasn't working naturally. So right. I think the work part is not always fun, but I think the end result is fun. When I get a message from a customer, like that is so much fun. Like I feel right. better. You, you, I love the way it smells. Or when I see somebody post a video on their story, you know, like making a jingle up, for example, that's so much fun. It's, it's great. And um, I just look for opportunities to have as much fun as you can, right? Make simple things fun. Um, I do this thing. I'm not super Zen. I'm not great at meditation. I'm not great at breathing exercises, but every day before I swing my legs out of bed, I just try to remind myself before they hit the floor, this is another day you get, you're lucky to have it. You don't have to do all this stuff. You right. get to do all this stuff. It's not always easy. It doesn't always work, but I try to remind myself, you know, and it just kind of keeps me focused on life, work, balance can all be fun. If, you know, if you can just stay in the moment. Like I said, it's not always easy, but that's what we're I love that. So I love that. And that just like was a perfect way to wrap this all up in a, in a beautiful bow. And before we leave, um, I, I always do with every guest, I do a speed round. So it's just a quick little okay. tapping into your subconscious mind so you don't get to think about it. You ready for it? Sure. Go for it. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. Favorite karaoke song? Uh, Islands in the Stream, but I would never sing karaoke. But, but if I did, I would <laughs> sing Islands in the Stream. Okay, song that gets you on the dance floor. Mm. I don't dance too much. Uh, there is no song that would get me on the dance floor in most scenarios. There's a <laughs> okay, pint well, of that's... beer that might get me on the dance floor, but not a song. Okay. There we go. I love it. Okay, great. Um, something you're afraid of. Death. If you had a superpower, what would it be? flight and if you could travel anywhere right now where would you go sicily mm. and last but not least what is one piece of information that you hope that at least one person will take away from this conversation today 
don't be afraid to follow your passion. I love that. Oh my goodness. I love it, love it, love it. David, thank you so very much for sharing your time, for sharing your love and sharing source soap with the world and the word of the day creator. I mean, we could talk about this really forever in every which way. Um, and so what I'll be doing to everyone that's listening or watching, I will be sharing David's links. And also your social media is amazing. You are a great content Thank creator. You. Um, you're, and you, you use humor and it's so you just a beautiful way. So, um, make sure anyone that's listening or watching follow David. I will be linking all of his stuff in here. Be sure to subscribe to what's the word, David, go have some fun today. Keep creating and keep inspiring because that is what you do. Well, thank you, Jamie, for creating this opportunity. I really appreciate you and have a great day. Yay. Okay, let's go have some fun and create some goodies. Bye. Thank you for joining me here at What's the Word? Follow us on social media with the links on the screen. And don't forget to like and share with your friend. Your support helps us grow and continue to make inspirational content. See you next time on What's the Word?